What's up Doomers, welcome back. I've jumped out of bed on Saturday morning because I need to get this pedal to you. By the time I get around to posting it, I might be wrong, but this could be the first independent review and comparison of the Electro Harmonix Satisfaction Plus. <laughs> I was excited when I saw this pedal first come out because I've heard about the Satisfaction Fuzz, which despite its name actually has nothing to do with the fuzz that was used on the Rolling Stones song Satisfaction, which was a maestro fuzz. It was actually the circuit of a boss tone fuzz with some diodes taken out, I think, something like that. And you could actually modify that pedal to become a, a full boss tone again. It seems that Electro Harmonics have come along, realized what people were doing with their original pedal, and just done it for you in one box. So all knobs at noon on the norm mode. So the first thing I learned is that you need to whack the volume up. That might be the sound that people didn't get on with with the original Satisfaction Plus and why they decided to crack it open and mod it. It's shrill, but it's... It's that. It wasn't a particularly good sound at the time, but it kind of fit in it. It was unusual. But of course, people immediately came along with the likes of the tone bender in the first face and fattened the fuck out of it. So let's first see what the attack knob does. So we're at noon on the attack knob. I've got to pull that tone knob down. It gets a little more friendly, but I actually like, weirdly, I like this tone knob right down. There's not many pedals that have a tone knob with a satisfying sound when it's right the way, like nearly off. Right the attack knob, right the way back up. do that I've heard in my other Boston clones is it becomes more like a drive yeah it's got this fuzziness in there but it's also got this kind of uh, focus to it unlike a fuzz face big muff tone bender that all seem to just get a bit wild it's got much more of a it's got noise as well it's got it's got much more of a focus <laughs> The bias knob is in the middle right now. And what you'll find is that the bias knob is sort of correctly biased, if you like, in the middle. When we go either side, we get a different sound to the bias. So I'm gonna roll it all the way to the left. I've got to dig in to make this sound. Sometimes it just doesn't do anything. So let's whack it the other way. Did you hear that? Did that again. <laughs> oh, that sounds gross. So that's a different kind of, it's doing the same sort of thing, but it's letting a bit of clean tone through. Weirdly hairy and. playing really lightly and I might not actually get any fuzz off it. Interesting. So let's hear it sort of part way through. I do find it has cutoff points really. So like three o'clock to four. Sputter fuzz. Three o'clock to noon. Bringing back the full signal. So if we go the other way. We get the same sort of thing, so fully off to nine o'clock. It's your sputter range, and then nine o'clock to noon. Brings everything back in. And this has got that Carcosa bias knob sort of thing. Okay, so that's boring because the fat knob's not in. What the f are you doing, Dr. Fuzz? Put the fat knob in. is spicy. The fat knob, I, d I don't know if this is just a bass boost. That's not a bass boost. This is... Hold 
whole different thing. I mean, let's put the bias full again. Listen to where the top end is there. The curve definitely seems to completely change. It's not just going at the bottom end. It's like it's leaning, maybe even mid scooping, maybe mid scooping. We know electroharmonics like that sound, right? Mid scooped fuzz. Give it a little more top. Shall I max out that tone knob just to show you? Just to, um, now we're on fat mode, I'll put it up full. We seem to have lost the fat. We've got all gristle. I don't think anyone's gonna play it there. Halfway is pretty harsh. And this can be a bright amp, but as you'll see in the pedal comparisons, that's really bright. So that's got a load of low end. So what's the bias do with this completely different sound? pretty similar really, just definitely a different EQ curve. See down there we're not really getting the fat through but we are definitely hearing an EQ change. Here's something interesting. I'm not sure if this fat knob is an EQ change because of this. That's the note it should be playing. If I play really lightly. That's an octave down. As far as I know, this doesn't have an octave circuit. Let's check. Is the box? No one gives a shit. No, that just tells you what's gonna what it's gonna do. So maybe someone that knows more about circuits can tell me. Is that just something that can happen in a circuit? Is that how we originally found octaves? I know octaves existed before we found that in first circuits, but is that the first way we found that a circuit could produce an octave for us? <laughs> Noisy shit though. So when I play it all together, it's not like I've got an octave in there. It's just. It just sounds like a whack load of bass and probably too much bass for guitar. So, so here we go, it's Fender Precision. I've got this deluxe thing that I never use and this is the clean tone from the SVX SIM. kick in the satisfaction. Now this is what I'm looking for a bass distortion pedal, that it actually retains the bass. The low end is there. It's still got, it's still got so much high end. I'm trying not to show my Bare ugly feet. That's tone off and we're still getting quite a lot of, uh, of top end. But I'm keeping quite a lot on the clean tone. So let's try and see what the bias does because going one way seemed to blend in a little clean tone. What's with that noise? I've got a little treble control on here, so I'm gonna roll that off. It's not sputtering like it did with guitar. Bias all the way off. Probably a clean bend if you like. Will it do an octave on this? It's in there. Really subby. We get like a synthy fuzz. I like that with the attack down. Like it. The pedal that has a lineage of sounding tinny, thin, buzzy, and nasty is now fucking winner on bass. 
And so let's get to some comparisons. Let's look at the KMA Fuzzly Bear. Now, first off, I've set them to sound somewhat similar with the, uh, the gain or attack at noon. Here we go. <laughs> Now the KMA doesn't have a tone control and that's why I can set things around, you know. The satisfaction though already sounds a little less mid heavy than uh, KMA. Turn the tone knob a little bit. So similar, but there's, there's something about the uh, the Fuzzly Bear, its tone just seems shifted down a little, and the satisfaction even sounds a little mid-scooped already by comparison though. Let's max out the gains. <laughs> Now the Fuzzly Bear at max gain introduces this extra bit of splat, squashing the attack. So let's back that off a tad. Similar but the Satisfaction's EQ just very different. The tone is nearly off on the Satisfaction Fuzz. There's so much high end, it's nuts. So let's see how these two controls that are theoretically bias in a way. I think the shin and meat knob is essentially bias. I actually got a similar tone there. Very similar, but that's the meat all the way in. So it's all oh, meat. And obviously the Satisfaction Plus has got a long way to go from there. We'll reset that bias and we'll see how they clean up because one of the big reasons I use this kind of pedal as my main, essentially always on pedal, unless I switch to a Muff or the Carcosa, is the way it cleans up. It cleans up fantastically. I think it cleans up better than a fuzz face. Volume full whack. KMA cleaning up. Satisfaction cleaning up. Now this surprised me. I'm gonna get an electro harmonics fuzz with some extra bells and whistles that could clean up. And it doesn't, it gets less game. Let's say what we mean by clean up. Meaning it retains its full tonal character as you roll the volume off. But with the satisfaction fuzz, although it, you could say it gets a little chimey, it also gets very quiet. It gets very gritty. Any kind of low end sort of disappears. It becomes really lo-fi, which could be useful to you. So let's try the fat knob in and see if it recovers some of that. So there is a bit of low end back in it, but a bunch of tone just disappears as you roll that off. Let's hear it next to the Voodoo Lab Super Fuzz. This is my favorite. So here it is, and what we get here is a tone knob. So maybe we can actually get these two sounding a little more similar. Back on the normal mode for the satisfaction, and we're going to keep that tone down. I am finding that the satisfaction side by side is kind of, it's kind of softer. I'm used to getting a fair amount of bite out of these beefed up boss tones, but the satisfaction... It's a bit smoother, you might like that. Okay, so that's where they sound similar with uh, with the Superlabs tone knob rolled all the way out. And that's basically a mid-range control. Could probably sneak in a little bit. Here's a Super Fuzz cleaning up. It's got a kind of, you know how so many songs in the noughties started with a radio thing and then went It's got that, it's like you could So the Super Fuzz has got a resonance knob and essentially if we take that off, we theoretically, I'm not sure where the tone should be for this, but we theoretically hear just a boss tone. <laughs> So 
So maybe, I mean, this toe knob's already doing something. So it seems normal. If we're going by the satisfaction standards, the original, you add these diodes back in and it brought up the fullness again. It wasn't so shrill. But now we've got not only a fat knob that would suggest it's going to do that, we've got a toe knob. So maybe we're dialing in in between that. Maybe it's much more than just a satisfaction fuzz with those mods stuck on. It's clearly got more to offer than that. But this is perhaps where it used to be. The thing is, old bus tones, apparently, they would just all just sound completely different. They just came out of the factory all sounding different in a, in a certain way. So there's them sounding pretty similar. And of course, the Super Fuzz doesn't have a bias knob. So if that's what you're going to go for, for some of those sputtery tones, it's gone. And um, with the resonance all the way in, we actually reach what the satisfaction is doing on normal with the tone down. So the satisfaction adds that fat knob that's so cool for bass and does the trippy octave things. So overall, the Satisfaction Plus is doing some unexpected things. I did not expect it to do this. I expected it to be somewhat like the Super Fuzz and the Fuzzly bear with some extra knobs from electro harmonics but as it turns out it's it's its own thing and it's pretty cool so hope you enjoyed that see you next time fuck you doomers <laughs>